Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Srini here. And in today's session, we are going to look at what are the different XPath access methods. And this is going to be like a complete start to end tutorial to make you a pro in XPath access. So if you're a beginner to Selenium automation tool, I would strongly recommend you to go through my playlist of Selenium automation, which covers from scratch on how to get started. But those who are already aware of Selenium automation tool and would like to strengthen their XPath from basic to advanced level, this is a session for you so please do watch it till the end and if you have any doubts or if you want me to prepare any other topic please do let me know in my comments section okay so let's get started so i'm going to take a very popular application that is amazon.in as an example for you all to understand the different expert access and we are going to look at all of them one by one so let's get started so this is the sample application which i have taken it could be any web application which you can take as an example for practice in this so let's get started with the first one so i'm going to do right click and i'm going to do inspect or you can also do function plus f12 together so that the inspector gets opened so here we go we have the inspector open right now we are going to minimize this doc window to the bottom like this top to bottom so that we can have a proper view of the front end application as well as the locator. Okay, so first thing, uh, I'm going to try it out everything in front of you all so that you all can understand how the elements are located to, uh, in the application as well as how are they interrelated to other elements. So everything is going to be completely from scratch. So please do watch it till the end so that you understand it thoroughly. And this is going to be very important in terms of clearing your automation interviews for Selenium and Java. Okay, so firstly, now you can see that there are a lot of elements which are shown on the header section here. Okay. What are these elements? These are called siblings. By looking itself, we can identify because they are all at the same parent level and they are in the same line. Okay, so these should be siblings. How do we identify a sibling? Let's again do right click and inspect. Or you can take this locator tool to take to the Amazon Mini TV. Anything is fine. I'm going to expand it a bit. And now you can see as I do a mouse over on this anchor tag, okay, I can see the Amazon Mini TV shown, right? If I go to the next tag, this is the cell hyperlink. Then if I go one level below, I can see best sellers getting highlighted. And likewise, mobiles, today's deals, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right. All of them are at the same level. And if I go below, everything is at the same level. Now, if I go one level up, you can see we can also see this fresh icon visible. Now, let's see what is the parent of this. So this is the parent, right? See, as I do a mouse over on all these hyperlinks parent, which is nav hyphen X shop, that is the ID of this particular element. So all of these are belonging to a navigation pane and whose class is nav progressive content. Now, what are siblings? Siblings are basically those elements which are belonging to the same parent, like in normal English terminology, right? So all of these hyperlinks are actually sibling because they are belonging to the same parent. So if in case, let's say I take fresh as a reference element, I'm starting with the fresh as a reference element. So first of all, I need to be able to locate this fresh element, right? So let's expand this anchor type. You can see we have a fresh span here. So let's first try to locate this fresh element. So what I have to do here, I have to create a locator. So I'm going to create a relative locator. So the anchor tag is going to be my tag name. And I'm going to say text equal to fresh, right? Just a minute. Now why is it not highlighting? Let's go back above. Let's do once more. Take this anchor tag and place it over here. And you can see that uh, there is no uh, text here for the anchor tag because it is having span as fresh. Okay. So when I do this a text equal to fresh, it is not able to give me. Okay. So we have a workaround for that. Okay. We can even come from span. We can come to the anchor tag. So that is the first thing which I'm going to explain you all. How do we come from a child? So span is a child of anchor tag. So how do we come from a child tag to a parent tag? So for that, what you have to do is I have to replace this A with span. Now do you see it is getting highlighted, right? The fresh is getting highlighted. 
but that is not what I wanted, right? I wanted the hyperlink tag because that is the parent element. So this is the first XPath access, which I'm going to explain now, now to you all. So please have a look at it. The syntax goes this way. First, you need to write the entire locator in a correct syntax manner. And then you need to put a forward slash. And then what is the type of element you want to reach to? You want to reach to its parent, right? This is a starting element. You want to reach from this element to its parent. So I have to write, say parent here. Then the syntax or notation is we have to put double colon. And we need to put the tag name of which you want to locate. So we want to locate the anchor tag. So I put the anchor tag, right? So there is only one parent for this child, right? And that will be always the case. There will be only one parent for a child element. So you will be getting only one match form. Okay, that is all what you need to find out the locator for the fresh hyperlink. This was one of the way, and this is the first thing which we have looked at currently. That is, we have looked at the method of parent. So we have looked at parent now. And I'm just putting the locator here so that I'll be sharing this document with you all in the GitHub repository. Yeah. So this is the example for parent. And I've taken the example of Amazon. In. So you can take any application. I've taken this application as an example. That also I've put a reference here. So this covers our first part. That is the parent element. Okay. Now let's say Visa versa, right? Now you are actually at the parent level. Now you want to come to a child level. So how would you be able to come from parent to child? So let me rub it off, right? Let's start fresh. Now let's assume that you have a way of identifying the anchor tag uniquely. Yeah, we do have the ID, right? So we can come from that. Let's say we have anchor tag. We have at the rate ID equal to so we are able to locate the anchor tag element anyway. But let's say I wanted to locate the fresh text. I wanted to validate what is the text present within the hyperlink as a part of my test case validation. So what do you do? In normal case, you would write like this span, right? This is also fine. This is also correct. You can write span. And there are two matches found here. So you can basically say span of one by using the indexing approach. This is one of the way how you can reach to a child element, right? So I'm also putting that as also an example. This is not an XPath access method, but I'm just giving as an alternative strategy. But what would be the XPath access child way? Instead of writing the forward slash span, you can also write child. Again, the syntax goes the same way. You have to put double colon and then say span. And here in the bracket, you need to put text equal to fresh. You need to put text equal to fresh. And then that is it. So this gives you only one match. So this is the example of how do you reach from parent to child. So this is the syntax of your child. I hope it is clear to everyone. Okay. This is how do we write the locator for a parent and a child. Okay. I have given both the examples. Now let's understand from a actual scenario perspective and when you go for interviews or when you start working on the automation scripting right as a part of your automation framework for your company whichever company you're working for there will be realistic scenarios that you need to find a complicated expert wherein there are no id available so you would have to form some expert with respect to the expert access in that scenario this is going to be very useful so let's say there is a particular validation that you would need to find out how many elements are present after best sellers. Okay, let's take an example or of a scenario that after best sellers to the right hand side, what all elements are present, the count as well as the text, we need to validate both. So you can see after best sellers at the header, we have mobiles, today's deeds, fashion, prime, etc., to computers. So let's count how many elements are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So there are 10 elements after bestsellers. So how do we construct the X path for this particular scenario? So first of all, as we have spoken about the approach, you need to start with your initial starting point. So let's say bestsellers is my starting point. But there is a text present for the anchor tag. So we don't have to go for any other strategy at the moment. What we could do is we could just remove everything here. Have text equal to, and instead of fresh, we can say bestsellers. 
So we have reached to our starting point. But wait a minute. There are two matches found here, right? So one is shown in the UI and the other one is not shown. It is saying one of two. If I click on the second one, it's not able to show it. So how do you resolve such kind of issues? It's very simple. Surround your entire locator with your parenthesis like this. And of this particular locator, you want to use the indexing approach of the first one, first match. And this is how you will be able to get the unique match. I hope it is clear to everyone. Now, from here, you would want to find all the child siblings, that is the siblings which are after the bestseller. As I mentioned before, all of them are at the same level. That's why all these elements become the sibling of each other. But we need to find siblings after bestseller. So such a kind of siblings are called following siblings. So the syntax goes this way. You need to write following hyphen sibling, again, double colon. And what is the type of tag which you have to find out? You need to use A, right? Anchor tag. So you can see that after the best sellers, there are 28 siblings present at the same level. So let's have a look at it. So mobiles, then today's deals, fashion, prime, electronics, customer service, new releases, home and kitchen, Amazon Pay, computers, and books as well is coming, right? Car and motorbike, gift ideas. So there are so many of them. See, we are keeping on navigating to the right hand side. And there are a few more present. So it's all the elements to the right hand side of that element we have found out. So this is amazing, right? So we have also found out the count is 28. And we have also found out what are those elements. So when you put this into a loop, you can extract the text by using get text of every element. And you can also maybe put into an array list or you can put into any kind of a data structure which you want and you can print it directly and show it to the user and you can validate against your test case. So this is the way how we will be using the syntax for a following sibling. So this is following hyphen sibling. Okay. And if it becomes more lengthier, I may prepare a part two for the session because I want it to be properly understood without being in a hurry. There is another concept called preceding hyphen sibling. So it's exactly the reverse of it. What we have seen are the elements which are to the right hand side of an element. So I would say here siblings to the right hand side of the current node. Let's say current node or element which we are talking about with respect to right. And preceding sibling would mean go to the left hand side of the current node. So instead of right hand side, it will be the left hand side. So let's try to this alternative way i'll have to put it inside the child right yeah right so now let's come to the preceding sibling so preceding sibling let's take the same example instead of after bestsellers i want to find out the before bestseller so there are only three to four elements which were there right so let's find out so there are only three elements see we have fresh amazon mini tv and sell and if you do next, 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 you can get all those elements and extract it. And you can also try to store it to some collection. So this is how we will be able to get the preceding sibling. I hope the concepts are clear so far. Right now we have very popular another one called ancestor. So let's look at what is an ancestor. Ancestor basically means that for all these elements, right? What are all the ancestors? What are the ones which are appearing above? So one is the entire parent of this entire header. Then there could be this entire navigation panel, which is covering this portion also, right? So this entire rectangular box, including the Amazon logo, etc., all these together could be one parent. So let's find out what are the ancestor for our, let's say, let's start from fresh rather than some bestseller. Let's start from fresh. So for fresh, we have to use the ID because we don't have the text for it. So we will go for ID. So I would say here at the rate ID equal to this one. And we have to remove all of these things, remove this bracket. Okay, no worries. So let's go for anchor tag at the rate ID equal to. Yeah, we have found exact one match. Of this starting one, we have to find out the ancestor. Now, ancestor could be any kind of a tag, right? It could be a hyperlink, it could be span, it could be div, it could be anything. Let's say we want to find out the ancestor 
which is an anchor type, right? Now have a look at it very carefully. What is there above anchor type? Do you see any anchor type here? No, there is no parent anchor type for this current element. What we have as a parent of this immediate one is a div tag. Above the div tag is the ancestor. So this is the first parent, immediate parent. Then we have an ancestor one, ancestor two, then ancestor three, and so on. It goes above in the HTML hierarchy, right? And then we have this entire navigation panel. So rather than writing A, we can write div. And now you can see we have got six ancestors. Let's start from the first one. This is the entire page. Then comes the header part. We can see there is a nav bar as the ID. Right? Then we have the nav hyphen main. That is this particular entire header section. And then you have the nav hyphen fill. And then you have nav hyphen x shop container. And then comes the nav x shop. And that is how you have got all your ancestor elements from your current element. So this is how we find the ancestor. I hope this is clear to everyone. Right. So now let's move on to the next one called descendant. Descendant basically means down in the hierarchy. Okay. And ancestor means up in the hierarchy. So this is the basic difference between the two. Right. So descendant. Let's now take the same example. Right. Now we want to find out what are the descendants after this particular. Uh, let's say computers, for example, what is present after computers you want to find out. So for that, we have to say text equal to computers, right? We have found out the anchor tag. Now let's have a look at the HTML structure to understand better. We do have, see, we do have anchor tags, right? But after the anchor tag, what are following it? What elements are following it as a basically like descendants of it. Let's say if I want to find out descendant, I can just say descendant anchor tag, for example. There are no descendants of anchor tag right? from the current element. Let's say div. There is no div because there is no child of it, right? If you see all of these elements are at the same level, but none of them are having any children, right? So this is not a good example for us to start with. So what we could do is instead of anchor tag, we could take maybe X shop container the div tag to start with. So I can say div id equal to f reach to this particular entire, it's getting highlighted. This entire menu is getting highlighted. Now I'm going to say descendant. So we have to be very careful about the spelling. It should be descendant like this way. And then you can mention what is the type of descendant you want to find out. So we have to, let's say, find out anchor tag. So you can see there are 32 anchor tags which are present at below this particular parent element down in the hierarchy and we'll keep on showing it to you and there you go you have found out all the descendants from your parent element so this is the explanation of the concept of descendant and then you have something called self basically self means the same elements or your own element so that is not much uh, in use but still i'll explain it to you if you want to understand better let's say if you want to use self right so basically, what is the tag type for self for this current element? It is div tag. So rather than saying descendant, you are saying self. There you go. So from a syntactical perspective, this is how it looks like, but it is not much widely used. So still I have explained to you the concept of it. You can use self and you can mention the tag name as the same as the name of your tag current node. Right? So we have looked at self, we have looked at parent, we have looked at child, ancestor, descendant preceding sibling, following sibling, right? And uh, I think that is pretty much the first part which I wanted to cover in the XPath axis because there are so many things which are there which are important to cover. Uh, but these are the important methods which I wanted to cover in today's session. I hope you liked my video and please subscribe to my channel if you have not done yet. Thank you so much, everyone.